everybody, I'm Tommy G. Today, we are visiting the most incarcerated place in the world, which feels crazy to say that one, it is in Milwaukee, and two, that it's in the United States of America, land of the free. We're going to a zip code where six out of 10 guys walking around have been incarcerated. Can you imagine what it would be like growing up in a zip code like that and how your life might be different? First, we're gonna interview locals. We're kind of on the south side of Milwaukee right now. Then we're gonna head to 53206. Let's go. Doing a documentary in Milwaukee about 53206. Have you ever heard of that zip code? Yes, I have. If you were mayor, what do you think you would do to help the crime-ridden areas? Oh, you probably need more police officers on the street, and you gotta get the community to band behind you and support what's going on, but you need to teach the right behaviors at home, too. Do you think there's anything, any kernel of truth that there is a systematic racism to this country, or do you think that's nonsense? There is racism. I'm sorry to see how bad it is here in Milwaukee. We're also known for being one of the more segregated places in the country, too. Yeah, sometimes it's obvious. No, I just hope that it improves and gets better, and young people coming into the, to the world, their future is gonna be challenging, and if we can make better a lot better for all of us how often do you visit north side milwaukee probably like every day how do you describe it to outsiders well i mean it's not the nicest place in the city i've done a lot of work in that area it is a high crime area i've never been like robbed or anything like i mean i've had shit stolen but like like i'm not i'm not scared to go over yes. there you know what i mean so did you know that in our city 53206 is the most incarcerated place in the world i did not know that yeah i used to stay in the 53206 area what was it like it was rough at the time i think i was teaching and i came home and my lady said oh my god they shooting between our house came home my whole house is a crime scene i guess what i wonder is what would it take to stop the cycle i think everyone wants to see americans overall win and that's a place where not a lot of people are winning right now so what do you do as a mayor or as a president to adjust that path i don't think it's up to the mayors or the presidents honestly i think it's up to the community we have to fix ourselves when i was growing up it was morals and structures to everything that you did if you ran the streets like you couldn't just do what you wanted to do. Right now there's no code. There's no code. So did you grow up in 53206? No, I grew up in 53207. How different do you think your life would be if you grew up in that zip code where that's that crazy, that much poverty? I'd probably be in a gang right now. I will say this now, and I think this is the truth. Your chances of making it out, especially doing the things you might have to do, they're not really in your favor. But if you make it, like you can make it anywhere. And that's one thing I'm proud to say. The left side of the spectrum will say systematic racism is the cause for all the imprisonment. The right side of the spectrum will say it's lack of personal responsibility. I feel like the truth is always somewhere in the middle. What's your take on that? I agree with it. I can do a crime and I might get slammed. You could do a crime in a certain part of the country and it might be a slap on the wrist. Yeah. But the personal accountability part comes in where I got that choice. Do I want to do this? Because I know the consequences. Be careful. Be careful? Yeah, be careful out there. All right, so we're officially in 53206 right now. I got one of my buddies here. He rolls really smart around the city. He's an entrepreneur. Let's talk to him. What's up, big dog? Good to see you. Look how fresh this guy looks. One day, hopefully, I can move like this. I fucking love it. He shows up sometimes with a bodyguard. Entrepreneurs have this mindset that they can always win, and he's like that. This is ninth and center that we at right now. So this zip code has a ton, a ton of uh, abandoned houses. If you zoom in on that house over there, you can drive down a block and maybe out of the 20 houses, 10 of them look like that. Yep. So you're a successful man. You're a guy, I admire how you move. How did you come from a zip code like this and what principles guided you into success? I ain't gonna sit here and act like it was easy, man. It was real hard. A lot of pain, man. Just capitalizing off of the pain. This is potentially the most incarcerated place in the world. Six out of 10 men walking around. Does that sound consistent with your experience here of that many men you know? Of course, of course. I got a lot of family members, man, currently locked up right now. I got an uncle that's doing like 25 years right now. He's been locked up since I was born, man. If you don't mind me asking, what gets him 26 years? A self-defense. He got charged with murder, man, I'm trying to get him out now. I was just like one of these young kids out here stealing cars. Did you ever get caught? By my mom. So I was grateful for that. We're both athletes at the same school. I wrestled at Whitewater. He played basketball at Whitewater. What credit do you give basketball in turning the shape of your life? And I would give basketball probably everything. Man. Do you feel like the justice system is fair? or do you think that it discriminates against certain groups of people in this country? It discriminates against certain people, man. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, what did you get incarcerated for? I was young, man. I was running from the police. I thought that shit was cool. Did you get away a few times before you got caught? Yeah, hell yeah. Was that like the coolest adrenaline rush you've ever experienced? Yeah, man. Yeah, but I wish I could take it back. How long do they give people for a high-speed chase? Back then, the officer got killed on Silver Spring. Because he chase. crashed? Yep, yep. So they was trying to set examples for everybody. He gave me 10 months, almost a year. It was a time out, away from all this shit. And I feel like I really needed that time because when I when I came out, I was a better person. The, the thing that we're highlighting in this story is that this is arguably the most incarcerated place in the world. Hell yeah. What do you think about that? That's horrible. It's horrible. And that's true. Yes. That's very true. I'll be watching plenty of documentaries about different countries, like shit in Canada. Motherfucker 
got caught serving weed to the undercovers and shit. Man, this motherfucker got probation. If they do that shit here, then this motherfucker going to jail for three, four years. We, they shouldn't be in jail for drugs, period. They still want to call it a war on drugs. War over drugs, one. Whatever table they sat at and thought about, oh, well, jail would be the solution to the problem. No, they need to go back to that table. They need to rethink that system just all the way fucked up. They pimps. They the, they the coldest pimps in the fucking world. They motherfucker get like 60000 per person who get incarcerated. It's, it's crazy that prison is a business, isn't it? It is, and that's why they can't shut that motherfucker down. The only thing we got here is prison. One day there'll be teenagers and they'll be faced with temptations on how to make decisions. What will you do as a parent to make sure your kids don't follow the wrong path? Well, me personally, I try to hide certain shit from them, but I also let them see certain shit and I talk to them. We have conversations about everything. I want them to know they come talk to me about anything. If you were mayor of the city, what would you do differently to change the cycle of this zip code? Uh-oh, -uh. we might have a Kia boy up here. No bush. I, <laughs> <laughs> I saw the mask, I saw the Kia. And they gotta have something for these kids to do, ain't nothing for them to do. You close down everything, all the after school programs. Our parks just getting redone. But if you go to Whitefish Bay and shit, man, they parks are fucking gorgeous. Yeah, and it's flooded with kids there. I swear to God, our parks, no. That's definitely them. What's up, fellas? All right, guys, so the story I'm covering today is that no one gets locked up more than in this zip code. How does that feel to be in a young teen to grow up in a zip code like this? What was it like? That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Motherfuckers out here stolen cars, smacking, getting grind. Just like look at her puffing the fucking stolen car. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so did you guys grow up? Like, did you know any people in your like the older guys in your circle? Did you see people go away? Hell yeah. And how did that impact your life? How did that make you shit, think? Motherfuckers come and go. Yeah. That shit, oh motherfuckers come and go. That shit don't So is it something that's just not a big deal and just kind of just expected? It's just what happens? That shit's come and go. Friends come and go. Girlfriends come and go. All that shit come and go. Move on with y'all. Four ties come and go. Exactly. <laughs> Sell time. Coming, go, stealing cars, coming, go. So do you guys feel like there's enough stuff going on for kids in the summer? Like there's enough sports programs, there's enough after school hell programs. No, uh, hell no. Are you guys playing any sports this summer? No, I'll be playing basketball. Yeah? yeah. Do you ever play 21? 21, hell yeah. Maybe one day we'll have to meet up. You'll probably dunk on me, but I, we can play some 21 one day. All right, it don't matter. But to me, a sport changed my life. I've wrestled, I've done jujitsu and kickboxing, and that stuff changed my life because it gave me discipline and focus. Do you feel like those opportunities are here in this zip code for kids to chase? Y'all see what be going on? Shit, look at everybody doing it. Driving, stalling cars and shit. I guess growing up here, did you feel like, did you feel like you always have to be kind of cautious on your pivot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Milwaukee we talking about. This kill Milwaukee. Does the idea of prison ever scare you guys? Mm -hmm. Prison? I mean, I, I don't like going to DTs. I mean, I ain't never been to prison, but I've been to the county and HLC. Mm -hmm. you, go, you can't go in there scared. Not scared of the people in there, but scared of the time that you waste oh, in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. The time. Because that can be a long time of your life. That I don't even like going to jail. In the hood, I was in there for Christmas. I seen you recording that red Elantra. I was locked up at that time. I don't care. That red Elantra, then he interviewed everybody. That's Mr. Meter case. We're gonna be right back out in three weeks. So let me ask you this. If you were mayor of the city and you wanted to make this zip code in particular a better place for kids like yourself, what would you do differently? To be honest, the police ain't doing their job. They ain't doing their job. They want to flick their eyes. But once they get like four, five blocks ahead of their they want to turn them lights off. Because they know they going to kill their still trying to get behind a stolen car. So basically, it's so treacherous that the police give up. Yeah, they scared yeah, they their school. life. I would be they too, too. Bend one corner the wrong way and smack out. Yeah. Hey, boom! I'm good. Man. All right, fellas, any final thoughts? Yeah, just stay right here, man. Well, <laughs> downtown the fucking mob. Downtown the mob, nigga. Fuck PMR, nigga. I don't care. <laughs> Did you guys want us to blur out the license plate, too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay, none of that. All right, we're getting the fuck out of here. Do you want to just send me the location? I'll send it to you. Cool. I, th I get it. These kids want to be cool, and I know that's how they think it's cool, but like having two people having to stop in traffic because you almost hit them is cool. It's like, dude, I wish I could put you in a wrestling program, work you out twice a day. You'll become a fucking savage. It is what it is. All right, so we're visiting some of my friends at Project Return. This is a nonprofit that helps people that were incarcerated find a job. You can see their office right there. These are guys I've known for years, really good men. I'm happy they're in our community. Let's ask them a few questions. How you been today, man? I'm good, bro. Making moves, making a difference. Yes, sir. So what's been busy on your plate this week? Man, jobs. Getting people lined up with jobs? Man, you know what I'm saying? Well, 
same job, trying to help them with mental health, sign them up for counseling, all of that, man. Mental health, that's a tough one to crack, too, because there's a lot of people right now that are struggling. That sound like Andre right there. Yeah, it does. Is that Andre? Yeah. <laughs> Just out there trying to make that connection with Quad Graphics so we can get some more people some jobs. Everybody What's in the building. Man? Good to see you. Right. What's happening? <laughs> 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 they coming in our office, bro. Welcome to Project Return, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So this is Project Return. We help men and women being released from prison who have blemishes on the background, whether it be a felony or misdemeanor. What we do here is uh, try to help them, you know, transition back into society. We try to help them with their employment needs, help them with housing needs, help them with clothing, help them with mental health. That is our certified mental health lady over here, oh, yeah. Amanda. This is Miss Willie over here who helps with the uh, housing. Have both of you had experience with the system, or what? And how did you land up in this spot? Every Everybody on staff at Project Return has had a brush with the court system or law enforcement. Everyone except Amanda. But you were the one I was watching out for too. <laughs> but yes, we definitely have a personal experience with what's going on. That's why we love what we do. And when you got out, how hard was it to get your life back on track? Well, I know for myself, it took me three and a half years. I could have easily went back and did some things with having my daughter. I already knew if I go do this, get caught for this, then my daughter may lose out on her father for a while. I had to go do little odd jobs for a little bit of money or try to figure out some type of legal way to make some money until I went through a program Program, a transitional job program when they brought me here to Project Return in 2011. It's a, it's a beautiful thing that you guys are paving the way for people because in this country it's supposed to be if you serve that time it's done it's over you should be back in and have a fair shot at things and that's the theory yeah, that's you the know, theory. But the practice is society still holds things against you. When we first got out, it was a struggle. Temporary jobs, under the table work. The, the key here is one, changing yourself, and two, an opportunity there to help you out. Me and Brian was blessed with the opportunity, mm -hmm. and all we needed was one opportunity. Right. We ran with that, and now we both successes right. in our own way. Right. I love to see it, man. Can you give us a little bit more of a tour on what yeah, we got here? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So this is where the magic happens. Yeah. This is intake room right here. People walk in. In Tuesdays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. any week. They see your handsome mugs, they know they're in good hands, yeah. right? <laughs> this is where intake happens. This is my office in here. I'm the employment specialist. So right now we're running our women's group and we talk about trauma and parenting and like domestic violence. Here is our conference room. See Amanda's getting set up for her meeting, women's support groups. So if I'm hearing you right, it sounds like things for substance abuse, mm -hmm. things for mental health, things for getting job connections, mm -hmm. rental connections. Housing connections. For someone that gets out and they find you guys, that's a big blessing. We try to be a one-stop shop. Okay? I like it, man. Yeah. What percent of people would you say have success when they get out? Let's say 10 guys get out, how many of them are going back to the the same shit and how many of them are using is this is an opportunity to restart their life we're generalizing this so in general i would think it's five and five right that's really dependent on the individual right. and the circumstances they're in and so are you guys overloaded right now or if people watching this video in milwaukee want some connections are your doors open or are you fully booked right now we are here for the community if the community needs us our doors open every day all day fantastic this is Mr. Clem Richards, uh, Richardson office. He is our AODA counselor. You can pretty much trust anyone named Clem. I've never been lied to by a Clem before, you know? So back here, this is where we have our clothing donations for individuals coming home. Oh, so suits place. and stuff Everybody. for job interviews. Yeah. I met these guys in the corporate world. I had to wear a suit and a tie. And he did. These were some of my favorite guys to visit, though. So this would be like, when I was staring at my steering wheel, wondering what the hell I was doing in my life, I'd come and visit these guys, get a smile mm -hmm. on my face, and go back out and knock on some doors. With the limited resources that we have, we try to do what we can, you know. For us that know better, it's our job to give back. It's our job to do what's right so we can change what's going on. I love that, man. Pleasure seeing you again. Likewise, bro. All right, keep making moves, all right? You too, man. Brother. I love Milwaukee. I love my city. I really want to be covering good stories about good people. One thing that's interesting to me is we've talked to people that have formerly been incarcerated, and they seem like they really have their life on the right path. And we've also talked to kids that the betting odds is they're on that path. They're going that route, and they seem extremely extremely reckless. I know personally, people in my circle, like I just had a bachelor party and four out of the nine guys had been in jail or in prison or on house arrest, which is kind of an interesting thing to think about. But, and all of them were better off after they served their time. I wonder if it's not a question of should you serve your time, but question of what should the conditions of prison be like? Should there be more education in prison? Is this the best solution we have? And also just the staggering numbers. To think that the US alone incarcerates 2 million people 
a year. Way more than even China that has a billion people there. We incarcerate more than China. But we're going to back to talk to my friend Demetrius in a more secure location. One of my biggest pet peeves in life is paying for parking. I pay taxes here. I pay taxes on everything. You pay taxes on everything and they still charge us to park. It's some communist bullshit. We're going in here to talk to a man that, someone that I admire, respect, and is doing things the right way as a businessman. So we just left that gas station, and I know you have a tattooed on you. What makes that gas station personal to you and your story? When I was a sophomore in college, my brother actually got killed at the gas station. It could be traumatizing for sure. So when I look at you, I look at you as a blueprint American entrepreneur. If I had a kid and they looked up to you, I'd be very happy about that. Why is it you think in zip codes like 53206 that there just doesn't seem to be that many guys like you that kids can look up to? First, let me say, I don't have it all together. It's definitely a lack of exposure. When they wake up, they're getting on Facebook and they see the Kia boys carjackings and they just being a product of their environment. I have a business that's opening up in 53206. I'm looking for people. Now I can bring something to the neighborhood. You'd be surprised about these guys that walk around here. They got real skills. They just don't got no one to take them serious. I hope kids from Milwaukee watch this. I hope kids from really tough neighborhoods around the country watch this and they say, I want to be like you. I want to be an entrepreneur. He's hiring people. He's opened up a lot of different businesses. He needs people. He's going to put his number. We're going to put it in the description description of this video. Give me a call. It's peak season in construction. We have a restaurant that's opening up. A detailing shop that'll be opening up next month. So we're hiring like crazy. We want to provide opportunities, man. Give me a call. All right, everyone. That's this week's video. I'll see you next week. Peace. Big dogs gotta eat, baby. Shirts, hats on the website, tommyjimmcgee.com. I love you guys. Let's get it.